Welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jessie. This week, we are going to show you patron attribute types in Koha. This can be controlled through your administration. It's a great way to track things like newsletters, um, friends of the library, you know, your board of directors, anything that you want to add to a patron's account that you don't have a field for. So Kelly, yep, let's walk through. Let's go. I cannot believe we haven't done this. So I feel like this was, it's been forever that we've done something like something this great and functional and customizable to any type of library. Within the Koha administration, you will find under patrons in CERC, there is an option for patron attribute types. So you can see, you can have more than one, you can have multiple, you can make them branch specific and patron category specific. So it's awesome. So let's just create a new one and go through all the fields that are available. Perfect. Yeah, code. So this is going to be like something short. We usually stick to three alpha. Uh, or numbers. I mean, it could be alpha or numeric, but again, this is something that's going to tie in. So Kelly did FOL, so friends of the library. So if you wanted to, you know, have this stand out on their account that they're a member of the friends of the library, this is a great way to do it. Kelly, mm -hmm. you want to walk us through the checkboxes? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you, a patron can have multiple values of this attribute, um, you would mark that this was a repeatable. So if you had, I'm trying to think of a good example of a repeatable attribute, maybe it will come to us. Well, like, okay, in the academic world, let's say that you're tracking like either their department or the focus of what they're doing, and maybe they're a dual major. So you wanted to put in education and nursing, you know, this would be a good place where you can repeat the field. Perfect. So you could have more than one of these. If this is a unique identifier, so if you were actually storing maybe a student ID in here, you would want to make sure that this was unique, not allowing another same person to have this value here. Display in the OPAC. If you want to show your patron that you're storing this information for them. If I check display in the OPAC, I also can go ahead and edit this on the OPAC. So this may be something that maybe you were doing a newsletter and you wanted to allow patrons to sign up for the newsletter using this patron attribute. And we'll walk through that in a second. So we do have one already set up this way. So we'll show you what that looks like. If this is a value that's searchable, super fun, you know, so again, if you're using those student IDs, making this searchable will allow your staff to be able to search by this specific um, value. Display this attribute in the patron checkout. This is gonna show up in that top left-hand bar um, area that will always be visible when you're in the patron um, checkout, details, notices, that will show up. And, and this is really nice. That way, if it's somebody that's at the circulation desk, they can see right away, oh, this is a member of our Friends of the Library. Great way to say, thanks for being a friend. Yeah, absolutely. Or they're a member of the library board of, of directors. You know, yeah. another way to just say, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, authorized value category. So you could create a drop down um, menu of options. So if you were tracking the counties that your patrons lived in, you could you create an authorized value and have all those options there. So your staff could go easily choose those and not worry about misspelling it or, you know, forgetting about doing that. The, a good one for this one may be just that yes, no option. So either a yes, they're a friend of the library or no, they're not a friend of the library. Branch limitation. If this is something you're only tracking or showing at one branch or another, you can go ahead and choose a specific branch, choose multiple branches. So that's nice. Now, the last two you'll see here is category. So if you wanted to group these together by a certain, let's say, patron category, like let's say you created one for non-residents, and under non-residents, you wanted to select what county they were from, other than your county. This would be a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. Tracking that data. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have class. 
if you had a lot of attributes and you wanted to create subcategories within your attributes, you can go ahead and within our authorized value um, option in administration, you can go ahead and create those subcategories and then, then you could choose which category or subcategory this specific patron attribute um, was included with. So lots of functionality, super exciting. Let's go ahead and save this and see how we can add a friends of the library. Perfect. So let's go ahead and edit Jesse's account. We scroll down. We are now going to see all the patron attributes that her category would fall under. So we have friends of the library, yes or no, definitely a friend of the library. Newsletter, yes or no. Um, if you have a specific proximity number or maybe the patron owns a ring of power, you can have, it looks like these are free text fields. So we're not using an authorized value, we're allowing a free text. Perfect. This is great. Now, when we set up this patron attribute, we said, yes, we would like to see it over on the um, patron detail side. So you can see here, both friends of the library, yes, and newsletter, yes, will display here and be super handy to your staff. Excellent. Why don't we log into the OPAC now too? Okay, so we're gonna pop over to Jesse's account. And then if this is something that you indicated that patrons were allowed to see and modify under your personal detail tab, you will see that patron attribute. Oh, we just did the, we didn't do the friends and library. I guess that would be something you would choose for yourself. So here yeah. you could go ahead and set, say no, let's say no, just so we have a difference and see that. We're gonna submit that to the librarian. Perfect. Perfect. I'm gonna go back home. This will come over as a patron requesting a modification, and it will tell me that Jesse has now decided to not get the newsletter anymore. Excellent. So, so sad. So sad, Jesse. I'm okay. gonna follow you on social media and get it that way. Okay. Okay. Good. Use too much email. Too much email. So this is, I mean, this is fantastic. Patron attributes have a great ability to store data that may be not something that's already in your patron detail form. So a great way to start thinking about how can you um, use this for your library and make it super fun. All right, excellent. Okay. Well, have a great week, Jesse. Have a great week, Kelly. See you.